but staying focused on TPMS sensors and systems themselves. I next want to talk about direct sensors, and that's probably the most common, especially nowadays. The direct sensors have a sensor affixed to the wheel in some way, shape, or form, typically mounted at the valve stem or perhaps with a belt strapped to the inside of the wheel. And the design of that sensor allows it to transmit a signal at certain times to a receiving computer that processes that radio frequency transmitted signal and converts it to a couple of different pieces of information. For one, the tire sensor ID, a unique code, alphanumeric code, that the TPMS sensor itself transmits when it's being pinged. Second, tire temperature. And third, the pressure itself. And finally, in some instances, the tire pressure sensor will offer a location. But that's not typically derived from the sensor signal itself, but more so the process in which we program, the order in which the sensors are programmed. So the one thing many customers and still some technicians take for granted is the illumination of the TPMS warning indicator in some situations or configurations that TPMS warning indicator could mean several things. If the warning indicator is illuminated solidly, it could indicate a DTC. If that warning lamp is flashing, it could indicate that the system is in a process of learning. And in some configurations, there are separate warning indicators. One to indicate a general fault, much like a malfunction indicator lamp for emissions purposes or a check engine light. And another to simply indicate there's nothing wrong with the system's functionality, but a tire pressure is indeed low. And it's very obvious that we have to identify which situation is occurring on which vehicles first. So the indicator of the light isn't necessarily a fault. It could simply mean that the system is working properly, but tire pressure is indeed low. So it goes without saying that further analysis is obviously required.